Hi everyone who is already waiting for our session. Today we're going to talk about accounting occupations and PR pathways. This is the second day of our event. Uh, has any of you watched any of the sessions yesterday? We had a full day of sessions as well about different topics. Or is it this your first session of the whole event? It's 12.30 now, we can start the session. For the ones who are already here, my name is Anna. I work for Aussies Adelaide. And today we're going to have this session about accounting occupation and PR pathways. With me, I have Tejas Patel. How are you today, Tejas? I am very well, Anna. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Guys, this is one hour session and we're going to open for questions in the end of the session. If you have any questions, just please drop on the comment session. And if it's not related to accounting, just please come back at 5 p.m. We're going to have another session with Tejas about different topics. So if you want to know about other topics, just join us at 5 p.m. I'll leave the link on the comments as well. Just a quick introduction about Tejas. He has joined Aussie since the very beginning. He has a lot of experience in the market. He's a Mara agent and he's also the director of Aussie's branches in South Australia. He's very active on social media. So if you guys want to be updated about any migration topic, follow him on Facebook. I would like to ask Tejas to start his presentation, please. Um, hello everyone, my name is Tejas. I'm a registered migration agent uh, based in um, Adelaide, South Australia. Um, so I'll be covering up a topic which is very popular, obviously, um, PR options for accountants, um, how they can achieve their dream of, uh, you know, settling down in Australia. Um, obviously, there has been a lot of <coughs> um, confusions, discussions, rumours, um, whatever you want to say that um, obviously they not much options for accountants to get the PR, which is not exactly true. Uh, obviously, it's it's getting harder or it has become harder, but it, it is not uh, completely a closed door. So in this next uh, 45 minutes or so, I'll be covering up um, different PR options for you if you are a, an accountant or you're studying to be an accountant or you're looking for information for yourself, um, your, your partner or your relatives who are overseas. Who are um, obviously, um, Four key occupations in accounting group is accountant, general, management accountant, taxes and accountant, external auditor, and we can also cover up as a finance manager. So you can say five key occupations, but these are the occupations which are based in uh, accounting and auditor, uh, which are very popular among the international um, students. And uh, because number of students studying in these occupations has been very high in last 10, 10 years or so, that's why it has been very popular in terms of um, getting the PR, becoming more competitive over the time uh, with high points requirements and uh, different requirements for the state nominations and all those kind of things. So we'll be covering up uh, different options uh, for you if you're an accounting graduate. Uh, very basic requirement for skill assessment is obviously seven in each IELTS or PTE. Um, or if you have done professional program in accounting, um, then you can get the skill assessment based on six in each IELTS academic. Um, so if you have studied from Australia, if you have met the core units requirement from either CPA, CA or IPA, um, you just need to have academic IELTS seven each or equivalent in PTE or you have to have six each plus professional program to get your skill assessment done. Um, visa options for skill migration in uh, accounting and auditors are obviously 190, 491 and 189. Um, so we'll be covering up all these three skill migration options and also I'll talk about other visa options including employer sponsored um, as well. Um, what I'll be doing is I'll be going through each state, uh, what your options are if you're an accountant based in any of these states or you're looking to move around in Australia because you want to get your 491 or 190. Um, so at the moment, um, we are discussing about New South Wales. Um, currently, the New South Wales requires you to have at least 12 months of part-time experience minimum in a regional area. You must be living in regional uh, as well. Um, and you must have uh, a commitment to settle down in a New South Wales regional. Then they can nominate you for um, 491. Keep in mind, 
even if your occupation does not show on the nominate um, the skill occupation list for the regional areas in New South Wales, RC, um, local, the RCB has a discretion to nominate you for um, this visa. So if you have been genuinely working over the year of um, 12 months or um, and um, you, if you contact um, your RCB, which is um, regional certifying body in New South Wales regional, they can nominate you depending on case to case. So um, what I'm saying is basically, even if your occupation is not on the list of New South Wales regional, sometimes that does not mean your occupation cannot get you the 491 nomination. Um, local RCB officers do have a discretion on, on grounds um, that you have been genuinely established yourself in that regional area and you have been committed to settle down there and you have been contributing towards the local economy, then they will consider your application. Um, South Australia do offer the same 491 and 190 visas as well for accountants. Um, so currently the South Australia graduates required to have at least 12 months of post-study experience. Um, immigration essay accept 20 hours a week experience, but if you're planning to get 190, then it's highly recommended that you get a full-time job and your job employment points must be claimed on your EOI as well as your visa application. So if you're claiming the employment points, you have a skill assessment done uh, from any of the certifying body as it's CPI, POCA, then there's high chance the immigration essay will um, nominate you for 190. They will nominate you for 491 as long as you have 20 hours a week experience related to accounting um, or finance. Um, there's another option for accountants if you have been living in South Australia for three years under the long term resident category. What that means is if you have stayed here continuously for three years in South Australia, um, you have a skill assessment, you have studied here and you have been working here for 12 months in any of the skilled occupation in skill level one to three and aged care or disability care, 12 months, 20 hours a week you can get a nomination for 491 visa. So there is an option three, which is not related to accountant um, experience. It can be any skill as long as you are a SA graduate and you meet the other long-term resident requirements. If you're not from South Australia, as in non uh, SA graduates, and you're moving from interstates, let's say we see a lot of students moving from Sydney or Melbourne or Brisbane, and then you have to meet the second requirement which is basically 24 months of paid work experience in accounting field or nominated occupation or closed related occupation. If you move to outside of Greater Adelaide, which means um, regional area, regional South Australia, which includes Mount Gambier, Cuba Pedy, Port, Port Augusta, Port Piri, um, then you, it depends on your employment type, but it, you need six months to 12 months of experience. There is another pathway for non essay graduates is 12 months of any field job experience in a regional South Australia. Uh, so this uh, option was announced in February this year when immigration essay changed the, um, the state nomination requirements. Um, that's when they announced that if you work in a regional area, regional South Australia for 12 months, doing any kind of job, um, 40 hours a fortnight, 20 hours a week, then they can nominate you for 491. But keep in mind, these are very competitive occupation. So it, it depends on um, number of applications they receive, and then they will nominate you. But as of now, we see most of the applicants who meet the state nomination requirement, they do get the state approval. So um, if you don't have any other option, as in you don't get a job in accountant or finance occupation, you're running out of options, then this could be one of the good options where you can move to regional South Australia, Keep in mind, regional South Australia does not include Adelaide. It is outside of Greater Adelaide, where you have to work and stay for 12 months doing any kind of job, 20 hours a week or 40 hours fortnight, and you can expect a 491 invite through this program. Third option I'll be discussing is um, Tasmania, obviously very popular state for um, Melbourne and Sydney graduates. A lot of graduates from accounting field moved to Tasmania in with the hope that they will nominate you for 190 or 491, obviously. Um, you can expect um, a state nomination from Tasmania if you work in accounting field or related occupation uh, for at least six months or more. They can also nominate you for 491 in, um, if you have at least six to 12 months of skilled job, which is in their high demand of um, critical sector occupations. So we see Tasmania has been very picky in terms of who they want to nominate especially in accounting field because they receive a lot of invites for accountants. So either they prefer someone who works in the field or someone who is working in a critical sector occupations for them um, to meet the, the local economy requirements. 
keep in mind every state has the different economy and they would require different kind of skills um, state nominations are designed to meet those requirements so um, it is expected that state departments will consider um, local job growth and local job market before they design their job um, skill migration program so that's why even if um, they um, they might receive a lot of applications from accountant but if the accountant is working in a skilled occupation such as something in transport or engineering or uh, hospitality right now it's it's under this critical as well then they can still consider your application even if you're not having the experience in your nominated occupation so that's when the discretion of the assessment officer from that state department comes into the picture um uh, as, I, as I mentioned, work, third option is obviously work in a semi-accounting finance or related occupation for six months for 491. Um, so you can also expect an invite from Tasmania. Uh, fourth state we'll be covering up is Western Australia. So Western Australia do offer 190, 491 visa options for their graduates. Um, you need to have um, a job offer if you are a WA graduate. They do not offer state nomination for interstate graduates. So this is only for W graduates, but at the moment this occupation is under the closed category, which means they're not inviting any applicants at the moment. They can um, invite in the future, but we have to wait and watch for um, Migration WA to announce the next financial year planning. Um, auditors are not part of the occupation list as of now, which can change depending on the job market feedback and also the um, next financial year program list. Um, another state, um, Northern Territory, it's, um, it's, it should be popular for state nomination for accountants. Um, they do offer 190, 491. They offer 190 mainly for um, their own graduates. So if you have studied two years of master's or three years of bachelor's throughout from CDU, let's say, then obviously they will prefer you to get 190. But if you are moving from interstate and you are showing the commitment to settle down in New, uh, Northern Territory, um, and you have related experience or some kind of skilled experience, they can offer you 491. So it's case to case basis. Most of the time, as long as you're working and staying in the regional Northern Territory, including Darwin, uh, you'll be fine in terms of getting 491. But you have to show two things. Obviously, your commitment to state, which is staying over and settling down in Northern Territory. And also the second thing is your employment. So employment has to be a skill level employment. Um, so it, it's case to case basis. Um, no, um, Queensland, obviously uh, one of the largest state um, towards um, uh, next to New South Wales, uh, obviously they offer 190 and 491 visas, but at the moment they're only offering 491 um, through the this SBO, the small business ownership category. So in this visa option, obviously the applicant needs to move to regional New South, uh, regional Queensland, and then they're expected to invest at least $100,000 um, in a business and manage that business for six months before they can apply for 491. It is getting very popular. A um, lot of people are moving from metro cities um, to regional uh, Queensland, uh, purchasing small businesses and managing that for six months to apply for the state nomination through this pathway. So um, it is uh, it is getting more popular for especially accounting graduates as well. Um, they're expected that you would be investing at least $100,000 um, and the business has to be two years old. Keep in mind, the business cannot be franchise business or um, it cannot be a new business and it must be 100% ownership in your name. Um, you are expected to em employ one a PR or citizen um, in that business to get the 491 nomination through SBO. Um, some of the case studies, um, what I will be discussing is basically uh, and these are the recent case which we have gone through um, from South Australia as well. Um, it's case to case, as I mentioned, uh, that what kind of job experience you get. So um, let's say this applicant, uh, Mr. Kevin, he worked in South Australia for two years as a finance officer in one of the hotel, and he secured for, uh, 190 being an SA graduate. That occupation uh, was accountant, as a nominated occupation was accountant, but the experience was not as an accountant. It was more about finance administration and finance officer. Um, so he, he got 190 because it was related to accounting. Then I was, another client from Northern Territory, he got nominated by um, Northern Territory Migration for 491 visa um, because he was working in a disability sector in Alice Spring. Even though being an accountant graduate, he was nominated for 491 
um, through non, um, working in a, a community sector occupations. So he got nomination even though he does not have um, accounting experience, which means if you are making a genuine efforts to um, settle down in Northern Territory and have a skilled job, there's high chance you might get nominated for 491. Um, Mr. Ali has been invited for um, my, um, Tasmania 491 visa program because he was working in a critical sector for them, which is a transport sector, um, even though he was an accountant from Melbourne, which means um, as long as you can demonstrate that you are a good asset to the state, you're working in a critical sector, and um, you are contributing towards the um, the state economy, obviously you will get priority in terms of your nomination, um, even though your experience might not be as an accountant or finance occupation. So these were the, the skilled migration options. So we, we, we have pretty much covered up all the states except um, Victoria, because Victoria is only offering that um, 491 visa option through um, regional migration for accountants. Um, that's only if you are having uh, three months of full time job experience in a critical sector. Um, it's case to case basis. We received few invites from regional Victoria uh, for regional Victoria 491 visa program. However, the employers must be in an industry which are deemed to be a critical. So let's say if you're working in a aged care, hospitals, manufacturing, um, industry and you're working as an accountant, then you might get a chance, you might get invited for 491 through regional Victoria um, programs um, from uh, Victorian immigration. But it's not uh, currently um, advertised as in that it is a guaranteed pathway. We're expecting some invites, um, we're expecting some updates from uh, Victoria as well in month of July, which is obviously in the next couple of weeks for the visa programs, how they will be opening up um, 190 and 491, what kind of occupations they'll be coming up with, and also what are the requirements. So guys, um, in next a week or two, I think most of the states will come up with their um, visa programs, 190, 491, the entry requirements, the caps on each um, either occupation or oral uh, allocation for the programs, and how they will be processing. They will be prioritizing, obviously, someone who is already working in their state, someone who have graduated from their states, um, and also uh, someone who is already in Australia. So um, if you are based in Australia and working in that particular state and graduated from um, the same state, state, you have very good chance that you get a nomination in this coming six months as well. So this is a very good opportunity for you to secure a state nomination 491 or 190, even though there is um, a lot of uh, misunderstanding about that there is no PR in accountant or auditors. Um, so obviously 189 has been very difficult, the skilled independent visa, but you can still expect an invite through 190 or 491 visa. Um, if anyone has been uh, waiting for 189 invite for a long time, I do recommend them to have a plan B because um, the last invite has been issued, I think somewhere around May or um, May, June 2019. So it's been almost more than two years. Um, they have invited anyone under the 189 category, even with 95 points. So um, don't just wait on that. You should have a plan B for 190 or 491 or explore other visa option, which I'll be covering up in next um, sessions, as in the, the next slides. Um, Obviously, moving towards the employer sponsored visa. So we have an option through 186 direct entry. This is an employer nominated scheme, 186 ENS. Um, in this visa, you're expected to have three years of experience and a skill assessment uh, in your nominated occupation, such as accountant, auditors, and your employer must be an established employer who can nominate you to, uh, to work full time. Um, there is a caveat uh, applicable for this kind of uh, uh, occupations. Obviously, the employer must be having a turnover of more than $1 million. They have to have five full-time employees um, as well. There is a discretion applicable on this. It depends what kind of uh, companies are they the nominating for. Let's say if you're an accountant firm, there is a chance you might not have uh, more than $1 million turnover, but you might have full -time, um, five full-time employees because you are based in a service-based industry. Um, so you, it really depends how you represent your application um, with the Department of Home Affairs. But this visa leads you directly towards a PR. So you'll get a permanent residency through 186 ENS. 
This three years experience can be from Australia or overseas. Uh, you also have to have a skill assessment. So you have to go through your CPIP or CA process to get this skill assessment done. Um, the other temporary visa options are 482, 494. So 482 is a TSS, temporary skill shortage visa. 494 is a regional employer um, um, sponsored visa. 482 um, mainly leads towards two to four years visa. It depends on your employer. Sorry, it depends on your employer how long they want to nominate you for. So let's say if they only want to nominate, uh, want you to nominate for two years, they can. Because this occupation is on the long term list, they can nominate you for up to four years, so which means you can get visa from two years to up to four years. Um, this visa also leads um, towards the PR when it's six ENS. So if you work uh, on 482 for two, at least three years, you can apply for your 186. Now, because you need two years of experience to apply for 482, a lot of applicants can apply for 186 after just one year on uh, 482. What that means is basically um, you have already got two years of experience to apply for your 482. And then as soon as you get to 482, you work one more year. So your total experience will be three years and you can apply for your 186 ENS um, because it's a direct stream entry. Or you can also apply for uh, 186 transitional stream after working three years on 482. So either way you can do it depending on your employer. If the employer is happy to sponsor you after just one year on 482, you can go straight away for 186 direct entry or you might have to work for three years on 482 and then apply for 186 transitional stream um, for your PR. You can also apply for 494 visa. So the main difference between 482 and 494 is obviously uh, 482 can be accessed through anywhere in Australia, whereas 494 can be only lodged if your employer is based in regional area. So if your employer is um, based in Melbourne or Sydney or Brisbane, they will not be able to nominate you for 494. They will have to go through 482 pathway. 494 is only available for regional employers. It's the same process for 494 as well, that you must be working in uh, the regional area with the same employer for three years, and then you can apply for 191 after three years. So it, this visa also leads the same uh, visa PR after 494, 491 as well. So if you look at the, the scale migration 491 requirements, you have to stay in the regional area for three years, meet the income requirement of 53,900, and after three years, you can apply for 191. Under the 494 regional employer sponsored visa, you'll be doing the same thing. You'll be working in a regional area for three years, and then after three years, you'll be applying for 191. So 191 is the common visa subclass for both 491 as well as 494. 494 can be only accessed if your employer is based in a regional area. 491 is for the regional skill migration, so it can be sponsored only through the state nomination. Another visa uh, which can lead you towards PR, even if you're an accountant um, or finance um, graduate or uh, a finance professional. Um, a very popular or becoming very popular is 858 Global Talent Visa. We have a separate session on this visa towards end of the um, seminar. It's around 3.30, I think, um, with Weibel from Sydney. He will be covering up details about 858, but it can be another uh, visa option where you can explore your uh, PR options, even if you are from accounting and finance. So basically, Global Talent Visa is completely focused on high-skilled and internationally recognized talent across the world um, who wants to move to Australia. This program actually fast-track your PR process. Um, because it's nominated by either um, a global talent officer um, who, who can fast track or who can recommend you to um, get through the process faster. There is an industry which is part of the, uh, the focus industry, which is financial services or fintech. Uh, fintech is one of the key industries where the Department of Home Affairs would like to have the applicant applying for 858, the global talent visa. If you have done master's by research or PhD um, from accounting and finance and meet the other requirements such as um, job offer or internationally recognized um, skills and qualification, you can explore this visa. Keep in mind, you need a nominator for this visa as well. So I would recommend you to watch the session which we'll be covering up on 858 later in the day um, to understand what is the minimum requirement before you can apply for your EOI for this visa. But if you are an accountant with like a PhD graduate in the accounting or finance, 
you can definitely explore this option. It can fast track your PR option. Um, how can you achieve your 190 or 491? So this is mainly focused on skill migration, not on the employer sponsored um, topics. Um, you can either focus on getting work experience, which is in close related or nominated occupation before graduating. So what you can do obviously is, um, let's say if you're doing bachelor or masters towards your last semester, you can either explore if you have option to go through your internship to apply for your 190 or 491. Um, try to get an employer who can give you a, a foot in the in the door um, in the industry where you can start exploring what are your options for your employment. So this is the, the one of the best way you can get into the industry where you can apply get the experience in um, your nominated occupation or close related occupation. So when we say close related occupation, um, it, it would be in the same group. So let's say if accountant is in the, the major group, all the other accountants such as taxes and accountant and management accountants are under the same group as well. The second thing you can do is obviously you can increase your points. So if you have currently 65 points minimum, you can try to increase your points to 75, 85, 90, whatever. Uh, but again, state does not require you to have high points all the time. It's only case to case basis. So let's say um, if I talk about South Australia in particular, immigration essay only considers 65 points for essay graduates. But if you're planning to apply for your UI through uh, independent talent category, then they might require you to have 90 points. Uh, that is available to every applicant around, around Australia. They don't need to be an essay graduate. Um, so that's the difference. If you're an essay graduate or working in South Australia category, um, then you just need 65 points. Whereas if you are applying through independent category, you might need 90 points. So in that case, you should be increasing your points to be more competitive in the application process as an EOI process. Um, if you can't get a job in accounting or finance, the other thing you can do is obviously try to get um, job experience in a critical uh, occupations or critical industry. What that means is obviously, if you look at the February 2021 announcement from Immigration SA, under the long-term resident category, they've also um, included age care and disability care as, as a um, accepted, accepted ex experience. Uh, what that means is basically, if, even if you have um, graduated from uh, accounting and finance and you have 12 months of experience as a carer, um, you can also get a state nomination 491 uh, from immigration essay under the long-term resident category. So if you are working in critical sectors such as health right now, um, then you can also get a state nomination um, on discretion basis from South Australia, Northern Territory. So you can try, if, if you can't get a job in accounting and finance, try this way. You can try to get jobs in this area and then see if, uh, if that works through the, the state nomination uh, migration uh, authorities if they can nominate you. Um, choose the right state. That's another key um, advice from, from me, to be honest, rather than just focusing on 189, because I know a lot of people based in Melbourne, Sydney, um, just relying on 189 to uh, either restart or be more aggressive in terms of uh, number of invites they issue. Rather than that, I think it's, it's based that you decide what state suits you, depending on your overall profile. You're going to get a job. Uh, what are your points? Um, what are your chances of getting a job in your nominated occupation? If not, then um, what are the options you can choose either through a regional South Australia option where you just need experience in any skill, any uh, job, or you need 12 months of experience in um, six, six to 12 months of experience in Tasmania. So what that means is basically you need to choose the right state depending on your overall profile make early move and meet the eligibilities. What that means is basically you just need to make sure that you have enough time on your visa. You really don't want to move when you only have six months of your 485 left or um, you are on a, a student visa for five years, seven years, and you have been struggling to get the state nomination. You should be planning for your uh, migration pathways when you are in the last semester itself or as soon as you get your 485. So if you have to move to a different state, you can start that move earlier rather than towards end of your 485. So you don't really have to go on a student visa or any other visa. So that just saves you a lot of time, a lot of effort, efforts, a lot of money as well. Um, stay away from rumors from people around you because obviously um, everyone's profiles are different to be honest. 
Um, make sure you have right information from um, either official channels or registered migration agents um, who are actively dealing in those industries or visa options. Even registered migration agents, um, not all of them might be dealing in the skilled migration. A lot of them just focus on employer-sponsored or partner visas. So you have to make sure that um, you're getting the right info from the people who are um, actively dealing in either 190 or 491 visa options or employer-sponsored visa options if you are going towards that, uh, that pathway. Um, keep in mind, every applicant has a different profile, which means um, there is a different chance of getting the state nomination at a different level. Um, even though you might, your friend might have same amount of points or skills, um, they might have different uh, kind of employer, different kind of um, job experience, um, different kind of industry they are working in, um, in which they, they might have got a state nomination approval. So you, you have to make sure that before you try to compare your profile with someone else, just make sure uh, that you know their overall background. Um, right advice from my side would be try not to compare your profile with someone else. Just focus on meeting the state nomination requirements because they are more important than uh, what others' profiles are. How did they get the state nomination? As long as you meet all the boxes for the eligibility requirement of, from each state, you'll be fine. Um, but again, um, coming back to the third point, um, this is where you can try your best. If you can't get a job in a nominated occupation, try to get a job in a critical sectors, which can help you to get more priority compared to others. So let's say if um, there are 100 people applying, only 20 has job in accountant, 30 might have jobs in um, other areas such as health or in um, infrastructure or um, manufacturing and all, and the rest 50 does not work or have very other jobs, then obviously the priority will be towards someone who works in the field and then someone who works in the critical sectors as well. So even if you don't have a job in accounting and finance, there is still a chance you might get the state nomination as long as you can demonstrate that you're, you're contributing towards the uh, critical sectors and towards the state economies. Um, these are some of the FYs, the Freedom of Information information from Immigration of Home Affairs, uh, Department of Home Affairs, sorry, um, about how many people have got the visas um, through either 189 or 190 program until December last year. Um, obviously, department only know, uh, published data at the end of the financial year. So for this year, as in June 2021, we're still waiting for further information. If you look at until December, um, highest number of 189 applicants were in New South Wales, uh, waiting for the visa to be granted. Uh, 190, again, ACT has nominated quite a few as well. Um, Tasmania nominated a lot of applicants from accounting background. Western Australia nominated a lot of applicants last year, uh, especially the, the Western Australian graduates um, with the job offers. So WA has been very actively uh, promoting um, state nomination um, towards only the WA graduates. Um, but at the moment, WA is not having the accountant as an open uh, occupation. It's cl currently closed. These are mainly currently on hand um, visa um, applications. Uh, so if you see, um, the trend has been 189 has been very low, 130 or 40 in, in total, it's only around 170. Um, on hand applications um, ongoing, which is very low. So even if you look at all these invites were issued before May 2019, I would uh, imagine. So they're still processing um, 2018, 19 applications and the number of invites were quite low even that time for 189. So um, that was the reason I advise that uh, don't just rely on 189. Um, make sure you have a plan B, which is through 190 or 491, or eventually uh, through employer sponsored 482 or 186 visas. This is uh, for state nominations, um, how many applications on hand um, in total. Um, so obviously, uh, they, it, 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 it's monthly basis from last year, July until this year, March. Um, this includes the, um, the state nominations and only the active applications basically. So if any applicant who already get the visas, obviously they will be out of the list, uh, out of the total number, but then eventually new nomination would have been granted in that particular month itself. And then as soon as the application is lodged with Department of Home Affairs, um, it will go into the total number. 
Um, this just based on number of applications for different occupations and also the um, visa programs. So finance manager, um, which state nominates um, highest number of applicants um, or receive the number of applications in the total program. This slides basically covers about um, jobs and um, outcomes. Um, it also depends on the EUI distributions. Um, so where the maximum number of applicants are in um, in that particular occupation. So if you are talking about finance manager, um, New South Wales has the highest number of applications um, in this occupation group. For 491, I think um, Queensland has the highest number of uh, applicants uh, with the UI in this particular occupation, um, with Victoria being the lowest at 4% and Northern Territory at 3%. So this just shows the distribution about uh, number of invites or number of active UIs in this uh, particular occupation. But definitely no doubt um, New South Wales always uh, is higher basically because they have the maximum jobs in in Australia for this particular occupation as a finance manager if you look at maximum jobs are in New South Wales at 39 percent then Victoria then Queensland just these three states cover up uh, I would say 80 percent um, of the jobs uh, for this occupation um, in Australia these are the stats for accountant in general um, keep in mind these are basically not invited uh, these are mainly the EOI based um, that these many UIs are either pending or uh, people who have lodged their expression of interest um, to apply for um, state nomination. That depends. If you look at um, 189 in general, there are more than 2,800 UIs at 95 points and close to 500 at 100 points. So that's quite high. If you look at very small number of invites they were issuing uh, in 2019. Um, so you can imagine in last two years, there'll be more people who might have applied with 95 points or 100 points. So the numbers would be different um, because um, the UIs might get expired after two years and then new UIs would be eventually lodged as well. But again, for accountant general, maximum UIs were received from New South Wales itself um, and then Victoria. Yes, Victoria. And this, any state it's mainly coming from um, overseas so around 1800 UIs for the state nomination were lodged um, from overseas as well yep so um, around 40 percent of the applicants um, from New South Wales for the, this particular occupation 27 from Victoria um, hardly from Northern Territory so um, it's very good state to focus on for accountants or finance occupations um, to get a quicker uh, invites from the state so if you look at again, New South Wales leads the, the country with 190 UI uh, distribution with 45% um, from just one state, because obviously the maximum jobs in accounting um, comes from New South Wales, uh, Victoria and Queensland. Um, obviously WA being a mining state, there has been some jobs, 10% uh, of these particular occupation jobs are based in WA, but uh, New South Wales and Victoria heavily relying on service industry, uh, includes financial services. Uh, they have the maximum jobs in this occupation group. This is again number of in, uh, EOIs lodged, but keep in mind a um, lot of people do have two skill assessment. So the numbers will not be accurate, um, even if it's from Department of Home Affairs, because I know and everyone knows most of the applicants lodge multiple UIs uh, through different occupations. So they might have a skill assessment in accounting, finance manager, um, external auditor as well. So they might have one person might have three UIs in different occupations. Or um, I've seen cases where people might have lodged five, six different UIs for different states and all those kind of things as well. Um, so these numbers can be just purely on based of number of invites they might have received. It's not on based of the applicants or a common identity that one person has um, just one EOI or anything like that. Yep, this is just uh, um, again management accountant where the jobs are um, Queensland, Victoria, New South Wales. For management accountant, surprisingly, Victoria has more jobs um, in terms of percentage uh, in, the, in the country uh, than New South Wales. All right, that's towards the end of the session. Um, so basically, if you have any questions particular towards your profile, I'm happy to answer them. If you can just type your question in the, the chat sections, I'll be covering up one by one um, um, question. Uh, we already have a few questions there, Tejas. Can you see the first one? That one, yeah, Rohit. Uh, Rohit? 
he explained a bit about his situation. He wants to know what is the best date for him to move. In 2017, uh, PT, ATH, Nati, Clear, Assistant Accountant for 10 months, um, working as a credit officer, accounts specific in Melbourne, no PUI, which state would be suitable for you. We're planning to move to SA or New South Wales, so as want to study from University of Sydney for any. Okay. Uh, all right. So, right, um, just to clear up that. Um, PMSO does not lead um, or does not make any difference in terms of um, in terms of the state nomination um, because PMSO mainly targets the employer sponsored visas 482, 494, uh, 186, 187 if there is any pending application for 187. Um, obviously state depend uh, state decide if they want to authorize the nomination on based of the PMSO advice so which means uh, only if I look at the state nomination programs, only Queensland offers uh, or using uh, that same occupation group towards their state nomination program. Other than Queensland, most of the states have their own list of the migration programs um, or the occupations they want to nominate for. So there is um, no guarantee that if your occupation is on the PMSOL, your application will be prioritized. Um, in terms of moving to state, um, you can explore your options either in South Australia, Tasmania or um, Northern Territory as well. Or if you can get a job in the regional New South Wales, that could be another option if you want to stay close to Sydney um, and do your Masters of Data Science. So any of these four states could be a good option. Um, South Australia, because you are not studied, you have not studied uh, from SA, you would require to have two years of experience, you or your wife, who will become the, the primary applicant if they are accountant. If you're IT graduate, then you require 12 months of experience in South Australia if you want to apply for your 491 here. We have the following one from Nadira. What about the ACT visa requirements? Um, Nadira ACT obviously has their own point metrics, which means you, um, even if you have lower point on skill select um, point table, you might have high points on the ACT point uh, metrics if you are meeting some of the requirements such as skilled work experience, um, how long you've been living in ACT and all this kind of thing. Um, but obviously, ACT has been very active in nominating the people who are on 482 or anyone who is working full time. Um, we have seen the, the point metrics has come down to nearly 75 points or even 70 in some cases for 491 visas. Um, so it's, um, it, it, it is a good uh, state to focus if you have been living there. Nikita uh, would like to know about what if the employer doesn't have 1 million turnover? Is it still eligible for a sponsorship? Yes, Nikita, so it really depends on nature of the employer. If the employer is, as you said, uh, obviously an accounting firm. Um, so because you are based in service industry, as in service based industry employer, um, it doesn't need to be a million dollar turnover. As long as you, you have a genuine position, you can explain the caveats for um, and you meet the other requirements. So if you're based in, uh, not sure where you are currently right now, but I would recommend you to speak to one of our migration agents to have a personalized assistance because it's very important to know um, everything about your employer and you before they can guide you for the further process. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Tejas. We have another one from Jodpreet. Uh, she has completed the study MB MPA and MBA from Melbourne. Can I start my professional year on bridging visa 485? Can I apply EOI during PY? And which state is good for her to move? Yeah, so Jodhpreet, you can definitely apply for um, your professional admission as long as you're on a great uh, bridging visa of the 485 and you meet the other requirements, um, which is English. Um, and in terms of uh, EOI, obviously you'll have to basically have a skill assessment. So if you are not planning to finish your PUI before you do your skill assessment, then you need to have at least seven in each module of IELTS or PT. So once you get your skill assessment done, you can apply for your EOI, expression of interest. Yeah. And moving to states, um, it depends on your job uh, prospects. But if you're if you're getting a job in um, either um, Victoria Regional, Tasmania, South Australia, or Northern Territory, these are my four um, occupation which you can um, four states which you can focus on. Mm -hmm. Madan is asking about these slides. We're gonna have this video uploaded on our YouTube channel from tomorrow, so you can check the whole presentation from there as well. Um, we uh, have one question. Yeah, I think we missed 
fun. Um, so you mean the South Australia, if you go regional, we can live, live and go yeah. with any occupation for six months or 12 months. Um, Nita, um, so basically South Australia has announced this regional migration uh, option where um, if you have been staying and working in a regional South Australia outside of Great Adelaide for 12 months, um, doing any kind of job, then you can apply for your 491 visa through that. But if you have a job which is in your skilled occupation or a close related occupation, then you can um, just do six months of job and you can apply for your state nomination in most of the cases. But um, this would be more, uh, pri primarily 491. If you're planning to get 190, yeah. then you might have to have 12 months of experience in a regional essay as well. The following questions from Rahisa. What about the Canberra matrix for accounting? For accounting? Yeah, so I've just um, covered up. I think um, that Canberra has a different point matrix. So um, they, they focus on their points rather than skill select points more. So it, it depends how long you've been staying in ACT, um, you can expect. Um, but the movement from um, ACT in accounting field is not that great. Um, again, it's case to case basis. Um, so if you're based in ACT or Sydney, what you can do is obviously you can speak to either WIPO or any other migration agent in Sydney office and they can assess your overall profile um, to guide you if you have a good chance for 190 or 491. Mm -hmm. Anish has been working aged care for one year in New South Wales Regional, but he studied in the city. Is it possible to apply for 190 or 491? And this 190 is very difficult, obviously. 190 being a direct permanent residency, most of the states will not um, nominate you if you're not meeting um, the skilled migration, as in skilled employment requirements. Um, but 491, it depends on which regional area you are in. Um, to be honest, uh, New South Wales regionals, um, aged care jobs might not be considered as a skilled job, but if you're an ESSEC graduate, obviously you have, if you have worked here, then yes, you would have got 491. Um, but 491 in regional New South Wales, I would recommend you to um, try to secure employment in either your nominated occupation or close related occupation. Mm -hmm. Sanu is asking about should he complete masters to get more points for PR or just bachelor is enough? Sonu, um, when we talk about point table, uh, bachelor and masters will get you the same points, 15 points, um, unless and until you might have done bachelor overseas and you do masters here. In that case, you will get additional five points for your two year studies in Australia. If, but if you are doing, if you already done bachelor here and you're planning to do masters, the point remains same unless and until you do your masters in regional area. So let's say if you have done bachelor from Sydney, but you are doing masters from Adelaide or Darwin or Perth, um, then you will get additional five points for regional. That's all. Sashi is asking, do we need to study in regional Victoria for 491 visa, or it's enough to have a job in critical sector for state nomination? Um, Shashi, it's, um, there is no specific requirement for Victoria that you must have studied from uh, regional area itself. So it really depends on your ROI um, as well. So that as long as you have a strong ROI and um, Victoria does consider your application because you are working in a, uh, a critical sector occupations or critical sector industry, then yes, you have good, good option in terms of getting 491. So, but in terms uh, the criteria wise, um, Victoria does not have specific criteria like New South Wales that if you have studied from regional uh, New South Wales, you will be getting 491 nomination. Victoria does not have then, um, anything like that. Fatima is asking to quickly explain what are the skills level, skills level 1, 2 and 3. Uh, Fatima, basically skill level one, two, three covers uh, pretty much a lot of occupations. Um, anything which is a bachelor or higher qualification requirements, such as accountants um, or anything like that. But then you have skill level two occupation, which are normally diploma level. And then you have skill level three occupation, which are normally certificate or certificate, certificate three or certificate four levels. Um, skill level four occupations are very low skills, four and five. Um, so if you're looking at anything which requires you to have qualification either in a bachelor level or higher, diploma level or higher, and at least certificate three or four level or higher, there will be a skill level one to three occupations. If you go on um, Department of Home Affairs website and search um, skill level one to three occupations, you will get an, uh, a list of those occupations. 
We have a few more questions. One from Kushi. What is the best date to move as his CR is going to expire soon and he has cleared the NATI exam? Uh, he's also ready to change occupation. Um, Kush, it really depends where you are currently right now, but uh, if um, if your forward fire is already getting expired, then I think um, if you're planning to study further, then uh, either um, Tasmania, South Australia or Northern Territory would be the right option for you. Um, that way you can study one or uh, two years, um, change your occupation if you want to change to a different occupation and then apply for the state nomination because I know uh, a lot of people who might have graduated as an accountant, but they might be working in a, a community sector management area or uh, as a cook or chef. So in that case, it's, it, it's, it might be helpful for you to study in that area and try to get a skill assessment in a different occupation um, and then apply for the state nomination. Mukesh has been working as a production assistant in a food manufacturing company in Sydney. It's been almost one year now. Uh, yes, she has done her master in accounting. What are the chances of getting 190 visa? Um, not much, Mukesh, to be honest. Uh, keep in mind, like, um, New South Wales is obviously number one state in terms of number of invites, um, or number of EOIs they receive. Um, it's very, very competitive occupation. It's very, very competitive state as well. Um, so uh, if you look at your overall profile as an assistant uh, in a food manufacturing company, uh, food manufacturing might be in a critical sector, but for 190, your overall profile might not be. Um, so you might have to either increase the points, but at the moment, uh, most of the trend is not towards accounting from 190 New South Wales. It's towards uh, either ICT occupations or um, towards the, the engineering occupations. Mm -hmm. Sruti is asking, what if we have general or management account job in Queensland? Is it possible to get 190 invite with 80 points? Um, Shrusti, um, Queensland again, they um, they were not inviting um, any occupations which were not in their critical sector list. Um, so you will have to basically wait, to be honest, um, for Queensland to reopen their program whenever they open. Um, as far as I know, I, I don't think so. They will be reopening in July um, yeah. because they're still working on the older UIs. Um, so whenever they open up the um, next financial year program, yeah. they will announce the new list along with that and also the new requirements. But, so you'll have to wait for that announcement. But less likely, to be honest, um, it will be 190. OK. Leon is asking, uh, currently 95 points for 189 and 100 for 190, living in Melbourne metropolitan area. Uh, we'll gain another five points in three months, making it 100 for 189 and 105 for 190. What are the chances? Um, so, Leanne, as you have, you might have seen my previous slides, the number of people who might be waiting on 100 points, um, there's still 500 plus. Um, so, if you look at those, in uh, even if Department of Home Affairs re, like restart inviting um, accountants under the 189 program, it will be still a bit of wait because there is already 500 people who with 100 points might be waiting. Um, so, um, but what we are hearing or what we are seeing from uh, departments of Home Affairs. Um, overall announcements recently, um, if you look at they they are more towards um, either employer sponsored or through the global talent independent, um, um, so GTI category. Um, what that means uh, for 189 program is, um, my uh, personal uh, assumption is basically in the next financial year, the De Department of Home Affairs will be more focused only on a very limited occupation for 189 and 491 regional uh, relative sponsorship. The rest of the occupation, including accountants, they will be relying on um, the employer sponsorship through PMSOL announcements. So they would expect that um, more of the, the PR for this occupations comes through 482 leading to 186 or direct 186 entries or 494 entries uh, through regional employer sponsorship um, rather than um, 189. Or if they're very high skilled, such as PhD graduates or um, high income earners, they can expect 858, which is a global talent um, visa. So uh, personally, I don't expect a lot of invites in 189 category in next financial year. I could be wrong. Um, let's hope I could be wrong, but uh, that's that's what you should be expecting. So definitely you should um, see if you have a, a plan B either through uh, moving to a different state. 190 in Victoria, less chances as well, because Victoria has not been actively in inviting um, 
accountants and the other occupation. Guys, when you talk about New South Wales and Victoria, you have to keep in mind um, these states are a very popular states in, in terms of uh, migrants' preference to settle down. So when the state decides the migration program, they also uh, depend, they also, uh, you know, rely on the facts that what are the people uh, or how many people are there in the job market will be applying for such roles. So let's say there are 500 jobs in accounting or finance or uh, auditing occupations, but these, uh, these states are very populated states. So they will have enough applicants who wish to work in these occupations. That means the state might not really need to nominate them um, because they already have enough, uh, uh, the employers have enough pool of the skilled migrants or uh, local applicants. So they really don't need to use the state nomination programs for these occupations. So they will be relying on just very limited occupations, which are actually in shortage, such as ICT or RN or engineering. So um, when you decide your uh, migration pathways, you have to keep all those facts in the in, in, in your planning. Uh, we have a question from Madam. Uh, which occupation out of accountant, general management, accountant, tax accountant, external auditor, and financial manager has higher chances of success in South Australia? Um, look, um, in terms of South Australia, all these occupations are closed to occupation, which means, so let's say if you have a skill assessment as an accountant, but you are working as an external auditor or tax as an accountant, that is fine, or even finance manager. We have personally launched a lot of applications under the finance manager occupation for the applicants who are working as an accountant at the accounting firm. With What that means is basically for immigration essay, um, as long as your assessment authorities are same, they will consider that as a closed related occupation um, for state nomination of, uh, program. It can change state to state, but most of the states will consider the same occupation group as a closed related occupation. What that means is basically, if you're working as an accountant, but you have a skill assessment as a tax as an accountant or other way around, that is fine as well. Um, but for South Australia in particular, anything which is assessed by CPO IPA, um, so all these four, three accountants, external auditors and finance manager, will be considered as a closed related occupation for your state nomination uh, purpose. Mm -hmm. We have a Kriti who has been working in aged care in Greater Adelaide and have done MPA. Can, can he get 491 and how many years of experience is required in aged care or accounting? Yeah, so under the long-term resident category, you basically require to demonstrate that you have stayed, stayed in South Australia for three years. You must meet the essay graduate requirements and in terms of um, age care experience requirement you must have um, worked at least 12 months 20 hours a week or 40 hours a fortnight then you can apply for your phone and money yeah. and i think um, you are on mute we have a few more questions uh if you can just scroll and see which one you haven't replied yet after 1.23 p.m. and see which one is different from the previous before. We are getting in the end of the session soon. Um, yeah, so this is basically, I had a graduate at a Bachelor of Accounting, and graduate work stream visa, I still have one year left. Can move to PR. I'm located in Metropolitan Victoria. My sister has PR at the moment. So Thomas, your um, sister will not be able to help you out for this occupation. Even if you apply for 491 under the relative sponsorship, there's absolutely no chance um, at the moment um, to get the nomination under the 491 relative sponsorship category. So either you should be focusing on moving to a regional area for 491 state sponsorship, as in um, state nominated uh, category. Um, or you can either explore different options. Um, uh, the other thing I, I'll quickly cover up is, is basically if you even if you're a bachelor of accounting or master's of accounting graduate, but you have a different um, skill experience. Uh, I've seen a lot of international students has been working in hospitality sector, let's say cook or chef for three years. Um, they can get the skill assessment done in those um, uh, areas, even though you have studied as an accountant. You can change your occupation by just using your experience um, and apply through uh, OSAP pathway if you are a trade occupation or trade uh, professional and you can explore a different visa option through that pathway as well. 
So what you really need to do is um, you have to assess two things. What are your PR options through your academic profile? And what are your PR options through your experience profile? It could be two different things. So you can explore both both the visa options to make sure that you are doing absolutely best um, to, to get your 491 or 190 granted. We have another one from Pranav. Does it matter to have multiple EOIs in the same parent group? If some if someone points are higher in one of the sub-occupation code like accountant or tax accountant or management, then they will be invited first, right? Um, as I said, 189, it, uh, I don't personally expect much movement, um, but then um, for state nomination, yes, it depends how many uh, points you have um, for certain states. Um, but as long as they are all in the, the same occupational group, that should be okay for you in terms of um, which one will get priority. But um, um, sometimes state don't look at um, the same applicant might have multiple UIs. They do invite multiple applicant, uh, multiple UIs at the same time. We have seen that recently in New South Wales case where um, same applicant has multiple ICT skill assessment and got invited more than one time. Um, so that eventually actually waste the state uh, invite, um, but then they have to reuse it. So um, you should be just focusing on basically, to be honest, one EOI, which is absolutely best for your overall profile and try to focus on um, that EOI to get the state nomination. Tejas, would you like to choose one last question to answer? And I'll ask you the ones who haven't been answered uh, to join us at 5 p.m. today. Tejas will be there to answer your questions one more time. Yeah, so we we'll have a Q&A sessions at 5 p.m. Melbourne time, I think. Um, mm -hmm. We have a lot of different questions in that as well. So you can either rejoin during that um, session. I'll be happy to help uh, as in as many as questions we can. I'll just quickly cover up the last, whatever last I can scroll down. There's someone from Sydney to Adelaide. I completed eight units in Sydney. Am I eligible for extending my four at five? So um, unfortunately, to apply for the second year or the second extension of four at five, you you must have studied in a regional area and you have been staying in a regional area. What that means is you must meet Australian study requirement uh, in a regional area, which is more than 92 weeks um, to apply for your second 485. So if you have not met that, then you won't be able to get the second year of 485. You must have studied and stayed completely in the regional, which means two years of a master's or three years of bachelor must be from regional followed by two years stay in regional, then only you can extend for another one year or two years, depending on your location. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, as I mentioned, uh, we'll be having a, a specialized Q&A sessions at 5 p.m. Melbourne time, where we'll be covering up myself and Viper will be covering up a lot of questions um, for uh, all the viewers. So if you have any questions, you can drop uh, questions during that um, sessions, which we have not covered up to just now. And if you have any feedback, I think Anna just posted a link where you can share your review for our sessions so we can uh, keep in mind for our next sessions. We are planning to uh, relaunch or uh, bring you this event again early next year so we can improve uh, in different areas. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Tejas, for all the information provided. I have just left also the links for the next sessions we are having today about partner visa, parent visa, sponsorships for 190 and 491 visa, and also the link for the question and answer session at 5 p.m. Thank you very much for everyone who has joined us, and please, if possible, leave us a review on the link also provided. Thank you. Have a good day. Thanks, Anna.